Okay, we now come to the second of our videos for the holiday homework, and it's the midpoint formula. This work uh, refers to exercise 7.2 in both the two unit and the three unit textbook. The midpoint formula is a quite simple formula. It's the formula of averaging. So going here, there is the, um, the midpoint formula from our textbook. And really all it does is it averages here, with this here, we average the x and we average the y. So the midpoint is the average point between two, um, two points. So just taking any two points on our uh, set of axes, so let's do uh, our favourite 4, 5 over here, and let's do 1, 3. So just joining that and making an interval, remember an interval is simply a, a part of a line, so it's a line which has a beginning and an end, then the average point would be halfway along here. So there it is in the centre just there. So if we were to just look at this once again as a triangle, and I'm used to making right angle triangles now, especially if you see it's our distance formula, we know that this is two units high and it's three units long. So the halfway up the triangle will be there at the one unit. And halfway along here will be at the uh, one and a half units along. So that works out how we get our distance, uh, our midpoint of that point in there. So all we're going to do is simply look at the x values, which is 4 and 1. So this is 1 and a 4. The halfway between it will be, if you add them together, it equals 5. And divided by 2, it's 2 and a half. So here, the halfway point is at 2.5. The vertical is halfway between the numbers 5, which is this one here, and the here is 3. So halfway between 5 and 3, so 5 and 3, is the number 4. So the way we did it, we said 5 plus 3 and divided by 2 equals 4. So this midpoint formula over here, this point is 2.5, so it's averaging the x and we average the y. So taking another one, this, yeah. if I was to take one in the, um, up here let's do uh, 5 comma 4, let's turn it up a bit, and over here to uh, minus 3 comma maybe 2, and we just join those intervals together. We could work out the halfways around about in the centre here. Let's find the exact halfway. So all we have to do is simply the midpoint, which is normally capital M, we would average the x's. So the two x values are down here is minus 3 and over here at 5. So averaging those two, that means we add them together, so it's 5 plus negative 3 and divided by 2. So that becomes uh, 2 over 2, which equals 1. So the x um, the midpoint x value is 1. And looking at the y's, the y here is a 4 and the y down here is at minus 2. So averaging these two values, adding them together, 4 plus negative 2 is equal to uh, 2. And when we divide it by 2, it equals 1. So the y value is 1, 1. So 1, 1, there it is, is the midpoint of that interval. Now what does an interval what does an interval midpoint imply? It means that this length here is exactly equal to that length there. So this could be the diameter of a circle and these two would be radiuses if we wanted to do it like that. So there's a lot of applications that we can use for the midpoint. So let's have a look what the textbook is going to ask us to do. So going to our textbook now um, and a forward. The first question here is simply drill and practice, finding the midpoint of um, an interval. So um, just, it's a very simple process. We just average, so here will be four plus zero, four, zero and four, and the second will be averaging the six and the two. So you get two comma three. So it's a very, very quick process to find that. Then we're going to, um, we're going to reverse process. We've got 
here it says that we've got the midpoint and the midpoint is for one and we're going to find um, um, the second point of a combination of two. So let's try a practice of that. So here we've got, let's have the, um, the question. The example question would be the midpoint of a um, of an interval is two comma three, and one of the ends up here is um, we'll say is five comma two. We're trying to find the other one down here. Okay. So what is this point down here? So the way we would set it out is simple. We know that the midpoint. 2, 3 would equal the average of these two values, the x's up here and the x value here and the y value here and the y value there. So let's put those x's and y's in. So I'm just going to drop this one out here and we're going to call it x1 and y1. Okay. Now that means that, let's put our Averaging, now averaging into over 2. So this first one over here, this is 5 plus the x1 value, and the second will be 2 plus the y1 value. 2 plus the y1 value. Okay. So this gives us two equations. That means that 2 equals, this 2 here equals that there. 2 equals 5 plus x1 on 2. And we've solved that now. This 2 times 2 is 4. Equals 5 plus x1. And that means x1 equals negative 1. We do the same with the second one. 3 over here would equal this. So we now say that 3 would equal 2 plus y1 on 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And then that means that y1 must equal 4. So we now know that this point down here, this point here, is actually the point minus 1, comma, 4. So that's the, um, the second type of question that you'll be asked to do. So here we've got, that's the midpoint, and you've got to find this point here, A and B. So I had x1 and y1 here a few moments ago, so now you'll be using A and B instead. Number three says prove that the origin is the midpoint of that. So how would we do this? We would simply find the midpoint and show that it is the origin. So that's the way we prove things like that. Looking at this little we set here, um, if P equals Q, where P is the midpoint of that and Q is the midpoint of that, show that the two, um, the two distances are the same. So uh, let's just, uh, actually I might just leave that one for you because that's quite a good one. I don't want to explain it too much. So if going back down to number five here instead, if it's something um, dividing in the ratio of one to one, that's just a, a subtle way of saying the midpoint. Okay. Um, perpendicular bisector, the word bisector here, bisector means to divide exactly in half. So um, you've got something that has to be a bisector, then it, um, where it cuts must be the midpoint. There is not much that I would like to point out here. Um, some exciting stuff here where you've got to prove that the diagonals are equal and bisect. If they bisect each other, then the midpoints must be the same. So in other words, having a look at this one. So here is our um, our parallelogram, so we'll just say it's a parallelogram, and that's one diagonal and here is the other diagonal. If you find the midpoint of the blue diagonal and you show that it's the same as the midpoint of the purple diagonal there, then they must be bisecting each other. Okay? So because this would equal that and that would equal that and they share the same midpoint. So that's how you do number eight. Um, I'll leave that way there with you so you can have some thinking about some of the others. But um, good luck and off you go and do 7.2 the midpoint. Thank you very much.